Hi, we are Wild Youth. Check us out on IndieBody.com. Yeah, very excited. Yeah. Excited and nervous. nervous. Bit of both. But yeah, no, it feels good to be getting another big uh, big batch of music out like you. Yeah. Uh, I think it just kind of happened naturally. Um, we just wanted, like, we, we, were, we kind of just didn't want to restrict ourselves at all and be like, this is who Wild Youth, like, this is our sound. We wanted to kind of progress and like if the certain songs like you know weekend rock is a lot like kind of rockier than anything we've ever done but that's just it's what felt right um and that's what we wanted to make so we kind of just with this ep i don't think restricted ourselves in any way and just Have made fun, whatever yeah. we wanted to make mm. i think we experimented uh more than we ever have and as i said i don't think we restricted ourselves in terms of adding anything in or doing something different with production and I think as well, because the songs were recorded right before the pandemic happened, it allowed us a lot of time during the pandemic to really kind of delve into the production. And like, we weren't under any major pressure to put out new music because people didn't know what was going to happen, whether you were going to put out songs, or you weren't going to put out songs. And so it just allowed us time to kind of really dive into the production and with our producer, who was Jimbo Barry, um, and he was very good and he was very patient and he was always willing to try things. And uh, yeah, so it was great. And yeah, we just hope people like it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loads yeah. times. <laughs> yeah, I think like the final version of Can't Say No is like the 25th version. Yeah, when it comes out. Yeah. The day it comes out, I'm like, I've never listened to that song ever again. <laughs> I think we're all a bit finicky and sane as well, to be honest. So it's just it just comes with the territory now. No, I think I think they'd be kind of close to the same. So I would tend to like throw in like maybe like different intros into songs or different links and stuff like that, but we tend to keep the actual track itself close to the recording. Because people at the end they come to hear the song that they love. They come to hear maybe like can't say no, the way it's released, then if you go and play it maybe a bit different, like you could like ruin their whole night, you know? So, um, yeah, no, I tend to keep it like as close to the track itself. It was actually, uh, it was, it was actually written in LA. And I remember uh, when I had a like, party or something, I was like, what are we, like, what are we doing here? You know, it's like, <laughs> we don't, and it was just like, that was the whole, it was just, all, it was kind of like all these people that were just around each other, but it's like they didn't even want to be around each other, but it suited that they were all around each other. And it was like, they were like, why are we here? And then went into the studio the next day, slightly hungover. And I remember just started with that drum beat. They're like, and because of like the lyrical content of the song, so I remember like jotting like notes down on my phone. I had Weekend Rockstars just written on my notes. Um, and because of the lyrical content and the way it was, we wanted to make it more kind of like, as you said, hyper and kind of aggressive and almost like a frustration. Um, so yeah, it just started with that drum beat and then everything else kind of came on top of that. Uh, a lot. Because um, as you say, like I, it is a massive thing. It's like when you do a show, you always want it to kind of flow. Like you don't want to start with like, weekend rock stars and then go like through the phone and then go it like something it's like so it's like very stop start you want to kind of gradually just make it a nice journey uh start to finish um so i'm glad that you thought that was done correctly um but yeah we, we thought a lot because we actually recorded a lot of songs and there's songs some that we had um, that we've been playing on tour and stuff that we actually still love like that when we revisit now it's not that we preferred any songs in the EP to these songs it's just it felt right for this to be the second EP mm -hmm. and they're kind of those songs are still very much there and they're alive um, and who knows maybe we'll just bring out a third EP this year mm. uh, I don't know if you ever kind of get used to it you just kind of have to like it's such a bizarre thing because I think we had had kind of a, well for me anyway I think you're all right you, you don't need any confidence from the camera. Well, the song, the song itself as well, though, is pretty, it's pretty aggressive and a pretty full on. So it's pretty easy for me to get, get annoyed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And it's like, I don't know. We like, obviously for like the first time kind of ever, we've been in like the video for next to you. So you, 
and then we were in the champagne butterflies video too so it's like but as everyone you learn so much from like those two things where it's like when you don't go out and just almost have to switch into a different person and like act almost you look back and you go oh i wish i went for that more or i wish i did that or i wish i look awkward or whatever why am i doing that dance um but then you, you learn so much from that. So it's kind of like you switch into a different... It's like when you go on stage almost. You just switch into a different person. It's like an alter ego sort of Yeah, and you just have to go out and forget everything and forget that there's people standing around looking at you while you have no top on pretending you're kicking a camera. Or, yeah. But the, um, this, the set was pretty cool as well. Like, you kind of... You couldn't help but transform when you went on to the set, I found. Because you were in, like, a tinfoil box, you know? You felt like you were in the same asylum, you know? So you, you kind of naturally became the character when you walked into the room. Um, I think we all kind of walked away pretty proud of ourselves from that day, like because we all kind of went for it, and there is no holding back. Oh, it's just a whole room of tinfoil. But well, it's like that, you know. Um, so, would you wrap like uh, runners after doing like yeah. a marathon and um, to keep the heat? To so it's all up. wrapped in that, and then we had another box which was like spray painted with all the writing, or, like can't say no, and all the different colors, and then. Mm. Um, I suppose it's kind of I don't know there's like arguments for both sides a lot of the time you'll just like write when if like because I find sometimes when you force yourself to write you just don't really write anything great uh, you just have to let it kind of come naturally um, luckily we're all hyper emotional people so <laughs> it kind of comes a lot Um but yeah, I think there's things you can do that improve, like to improve your lyrics, you know, like even reading books and if you study poetry or if you look up like inspirational quotes or just different things and different ways to express how you feel, and different ways to, yeah, just different vocab is always helpful. But no, we always just kind of write whenever it feels right to write and whenever we feel something because that's nine times out of ten where most of the honesty comes from and that's always kind of when the songs just really come and like flow it was written actually it was the last song that was written out of all of our songs on the EP it was only written in like September uh, so like the whole EP was done and this song kind of came out of nowhere <clears throat> um, like just about like being separated from someone you love obviously and it just if it felt right I think lyrically and we thought that maybe if people could hear it it would help and you it's know fit, fit the time frame of the world right now yeah and I think it was uh I thought it was a nice note to kind of finish the EP on because it's like all those nights you're alone I love you right through the phone it's like until things get better I'm still always going to love you and we are still in this pandemic and we are still going through all this so we just thought it was like a nice kind of mm -hmm. loving positive tone to finish the EP on yeah, we've lost our mind. Uh, we've done everything. Yeah, for sure. I think um, I think Dave helped us get through this uh, probably more than we've helped them get through this, to be honest. Uh, yeah, as you said, we did do this thing. It was like a wild youth club. and um, It was like a private page that like, fans could get in, involved in and they could chat about whatever they wanted, life, etc. But then we'd go on once a week each and we'd, Ed was doing cooking classes, Connor was talking through fashion and stuff, Kyle was watching TV series with them. Uh, we were all doing different things and it kind of made us feel so humble and so nice to know that we have so many people there that want to support us on a daily basis. And uh, like everyone's going through shit right now, but they took time out to like just come and say how much they love us, you know? So, um. Yeah, well, I'm pretty proud to know that we we have some great fans out there, you know. I love Weekend Rockstars. I just love it because it's an absolute banger. Like, yeah. that's why I just want to get on stage and just dive off the fucking stage of the crowd. Like, you know what I mean? Um, it's a banger. I don't know. I think I ebb and flow with all the different songs. Uh, some days it's Next to You, some days it's Can't Say No, some days it's Through the Phone or Weekend Rockstars. Um, yeah, it totally just, it depends kind of, and I think that's the, well, I'm saying this, it sounds arrogant, but I think that's the great thing about TP is it's kind of like songs for all different moods and, you know, so some days if I, if I want to go for a run, I put on Weekend Rockstars, you know, if I want to cry, I'll put on Through the Phone. Um, 
So yeah, I, I kind of love them all, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's quite full on, uh, like us. Um, yeah, I suppose I like. I don't know. It's always kind of the way we've been. Um, we always try and make things as epic as possible, and I think that's probably. You know, if you give them free reign on production, we want to make these absolute monstrosities. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a huge part. It's like it's as important as the music for us in in so many different ways because it's all part of what you're putting out to the world. So as important as the song that you're putting out to the world, so is this image that you'll see for the rest of your life, probably. Um, and yeah, it all kind of has to fit the journey of what the music is if that makes if if you get what I mean so like can't say no the imagery had it made total sense that it was like you know darker and like you know because that's kind of the mood of the song and then um, you know Champagne Butterflies was more colourful and you know like a, a like a hippie world because that's kind of how the, the song felt was a feel good kind of song and then I think like next he was touch more like psychedelic because that's kind of the vibe of what that song was. So yeah, we're, we're very, uh, very hands-on in terms of that and um, deciding how the artwork will look, how the videos will go, the color scheme, clothing, everything. So, so much. Thank you for that. <laughs>